G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, today we're going to look at Morse tapers. I got a bit of a rough throat this morning, so just bear with me. Now, if you've got a workshop and you've got a lathe and a milling machine or a pillar drill, the odds are you're going to have a variety of different sized Morse tapers. And they can be from Morse 4, commonly, down to Morse 0. And quite often it's good to be able to share, you know, the various components across the, the range of machinery. Of course, if the Morses are a different size, we, we've got problems. You know, this is a Morse 3, and this is a Morse 2. Morse 2 is very common. So, you know, how can I use that? in a Morse 3 or even a Morse 4? Well, the obvious answer is that you use an adapter sleeve like that. And these just fit on and basically, hey presto, it suddenly becomes a, a Morse 3, whereas it was a Morse 2. To get them off, you just knock a wedge, put a wedge in there, hit it with a hammer, and that just pings them out. It's the same wedge that we'd use for a, a pillar drill to get it out of the column, the quill. Now you think, oh, that's a great idea, you know, that's, uh, that's wonderful. Well, it is a good idea, but it comes at a price because every piece of tooling you've got will be slightly inaccurate well, it could be very inaccurate. It depends how well it's made. So every time you put a Morse taper in another Morse taper, there's going to be an, an inherent error factor there to deal with on both components. And they can actually uh, accumulate the error or they can cancel out the error depending on how it, it lines up. So, you know, you could put... A, a Morse taper in a, an adapter and you can get a perfect reading if they cancel, if the errors cancel each other out or you can get a lot of run out if both of the errors are in the same position radially they'll compound each other. So how bad are these, you know, how bad are these adapters, you know, who would use an adapter like this? Well, I've got to say I use one of these fairly regularly. And I've got it on this uh, uh, copy of a Rome chuck that I got from Banglin. And it, it does the job. I only use it in the tail stock. And, uh, you know, you can think, oh, well, the tail stock's not going to be that important. Well, you know, you can, it'll definitely be important because any movement um, actually is going to make your hole bigger. And, of course, if you're using it on a, on a live centre, it'll throw out your uh, machining um, parallelism as well. So, OK, how bad are these? I mean, are they really as bad as some people say? Well, it depends on the quality, obviously. But what I'll do is I'll put one of these in the mini lathe, which is pretty accurate, very accurate on the Morse taper, and we'll take some measurements I use the mini lathe because it's got variable speed and I can just spin it over very slowly. So let's give it a go. So here's the mini lathe. I'll take off the chuck, take off the, the four-way tool post and then we'll do some measurements. Uh, the spindle run out was 0 0.01 from memory. That was consistent within the taper. If you measure a taper, you always measure in, inside and outside of it because you've got radial run out and you've also got actual run out possibilities and it was consistent right through so it's very accurate so I'll take an initial reading and then I'll put in one of the sleeves take a reading inside, outside on the taper and knock it out I'll rotate it 180 degrees put it back in, measure it again. And then we'll do the same thing with the other Morse taper sleeve I've got. These are both high quality sleeves that I bought 
uh, from overseas long before Banggood came along. I can't comment on Banggood sleeves. I never used any of them. But, uh, yeah, they seem, well, they seem accurate. We'll find out. I've never measured them before, so this is something uh, that'll be a first time. Okay, let's get on with it. Okay, so this is on the outer edge of the taper. We'll just turn it over slowly. That's less than 0 0.01. Pretty damn good, eh? Now we'll go in. Try it again. Pretty much the same. Very, very good. Extremely accurate. This uh, little sumo lathe is extremely accurate. Uh, it's interesting, I've had comments since I reviewed this from a number of people saying, oh, you know, you must have got a special unit because their, their mini lathe is a piece of crap. It's not accurate at all. And I got back and I said, well, is it a sumo? And the answer was, uh, uh, no, no, no. Well, it's, uh, no, it's not a sumo. I said, well, there you go. You get what you pay for, mate. Okay, moving on. So we'll try one of the tapers in there, one of the sleeves, and see what result we get. First, we'll use the sleeve that I've been using for a long time on that uh, Rome coffee. I'll just tap in with a bit of wood. Seated properly. Now we'll see what result we get. Okay, so we're near the outside edge. Give it a go. So you can see your errors increase straight away. But it's still 0 0.02, so it's still not too bad. Then we'll go in. We'll try it now. A little bit less error, not much in it. But certainly twice as much error as just in the quill. Okay, now I'll knock it out. I'll turn it around 180 degrees and we'll see what happens. Now when you tap these, you don't have to belt the bejesus out of them. Like all these Morse tapers, just tap them in lightly and they'll grip. You know, it's, uh, it's not necessary to pound the hell out of them. We're on the outside edge. Let's try it again. See here, the error is less. It's virtually back to the original spec. So the errors have cancelled each other out by turning it around. 180 degrees. So always try that. If you get run out, just turn around your uh, your Morse taper. There's a good chance that the errors might cancel. It depends what uh, is going on. Now we'll try it for axial run out. Once again, we're back to the original setup, the original accuracy of the of the spindle. So, yeah, it's 
it's not too bad actually, it's quite usable and uh, I wouldn't, you know, be too worried about that little bit of run out. And I've used that for many years on the, uh, on the drill, chuck in the tail stop, been quite happy with the results and the holes have all drilled out to size so the error factor is very very low. So yeah, so far so good. I'm pleased with that. Let's try the other one. Okay, here's the other one. It looks similar, but it's not the same. It's different on the on the tang. It's definitely different brands. Once again, just tapped in. Oh, hello, the doves are out and about. Let's give it a go. There we go. Now these little test indicators are also great test indicators. This shea is great. The little the little mount is on is so super handy, much better than the great big magnetic bases. This is all I ever use. It's brilliant. So yeah, if you're going to get a test indicator, get one of these mounts. Uh, super handy. Okay, let's try this one. See how it goes. Whoa! Look at that. Look at that, that's a lot worse. Twice as much again as the, well, yeah, easily. Twice the error factor of the other sleeve. The other sleeve is good, I knew it was good. But this one, look at that. Yep, 0 0.025, still reasonable because most lathes are rated at 0 0.02 but there's definitely an error there introduced so let's turn it 180 degrees I'll find my reference mark where is it there it is okay now I'll see what difference this makes and it's reduced the error about 0 0.05 you're still getting 0 0.02 it was 0 0.025 before so yeah this one's definitely not as good as the other one so this is a quick little test you can do on your sleeves and your, your quill you know as I said get a test indicator there's a bee's knees oh look at that it's got worse so this has got actual run out in it as well as radial. It's increased by 0 0.05 on the actual run out. It's, yeah, fair to middling. Certainly it's not as accurate as the other one. And it's something you should be aware of so what does this translate to as far as if we put a drill chuck in there and uh, bearing in mind a drill chuck's going to have run out as well. This is just for, for kicks. Let's see what happens when we put a drill chuck in the sleeve, put something in the drill chuck and then take some readings. We'll do that. All right, so this is my old Rome chuck, which I've used in the drill, drill press for quite a few years. And it's pretty old and it's done a lot of work. We'll see what its slight accuracy was. Whoa, look at that. It's uh, got some run out. The drill trucks are like that. I mean, you'd be lucky to get one that is truly accurate, I think. This is where. If you're going to do accurate drilling, use collets. Collets will be a lot more accurate. Okay, I've turned the, the chuck around half a turn. We'll see what result we get now. Get there in. She was about there, wasn't she? Not as bad. Nowhere near as bad.
So that's, you know, reasonable, you know. That's not too bad. So once again, as I said, try it in one position, run out whatever, measure it, then turn it around half a turn. You could have a big effect on your accuracy. So, so now we'll try the Banggood chuck in the sleeve, see what result we get. Yeah, it's worse than the Rome. 0 0.03. Uh, reasonable. I mean, that's not too bad. For a cheap chuck, you know, cheap drill chuck, that's about what you'd expect. You know, I've seen them a lot worse than that, believe me. So that's, that's, that's okay. But you can always do better. I'll turn around half a turn and we'll see what result we get. Look at that. The difference. So it's compounding the error. Exactly what I told you earlier. Always check for a compounding error. So you want to turn it round half a turn and you'll get a lot better result. Okay, well this has been pretty interesting hasn't it? But it's shown me exactly what I expected to find. And yep, pay you to check your tapers and find the best position basically on all of your morses because it will be better in one spot than anywhere else whether it has a sleeve or it doesn't have a sleeve. So there you are, it just shows you that reducing the sleeves aren't all created equal which of course you'd expect to be the case and these were both quite expensive, well reasonably dear good quality units because I don't believe in buying cheap reducers because there's so much likelihood of getting run out you know they just have got to be good or reasonably good to to do the job otherwise they'll just magnify the errors to hell and uh, I've never tried cheap ones like I've never tested reviewed the Banggood ones I don't know how good they are maybe down the track I'll get a couple and see but that's the Banggood chuck now I actually, you know, got a good result in the end by turning it around. So if you've got reducing sleeves and you've got uh, Morse tapers, or even if you're just using Morse tapers in a spindle, rotate it around, try it in various positions, and there'll be one position that will be the best. Mark it in some way and use it from then on. It's the same situation as applies to collets, you know, using collets and collet chucks. If you've got collets that are, that are a bit on the El cheapo side and they've got run out, turn them around and you'll get a position where it will produce the best accuracy. It's not a panacea to fix everything, but it will definitely improve your accuracy of your work. And yeah, I see this you Get out of the workshop and check out your goodies. Okay, so now we know how good my stuff is. And, well, that's it for now. So I hope you got something out of it. We'll see you next time. Cheers.